Hello, my name is David Rivers and uh, together with my wife Natasha, we run a small grassroots publishing company called Tendava Press. And um, today we are speaking with Galen Sharp, uh, who is an American author, sculptor and inventor uh, who was a long uh, term pen pal student of uh, the famous Wei Wu Wei, uh, Terence Gray. And um, we are very uh, honoured to have helped Galen bring his book, uh, What Am I? A Study in Non-Volitional Living, uh, into print and make it available as a Kindle e-book uh, or as a paperback on Amazon. So I hope you enjoy um, this brief talk with Galen. Thank you. Your book is called What Am I? A Study in Non-Volitional Living. I'm curious to know what is the connection between what we are, per se, and the concept of non-volitional living? Yes, David. Once I discover what I am, that leads me to how does this affect what I say and do? In other words, my volition. When I understand that, then the mind can relax and operate spontaneously and effortlessly. How is it that we as human beings have become so identified with this sense of doership? Is this some kind of glitch in the nature of things or is it meant to be this way? Mm, well, we're raised this way since birth. We're taught that we must control our will using willpower, and we find it very difficult. We aren't meant to be this way. Traditionally, it is said that to reach the higher way of knowing, what is often called enlightenment, a person needs to study a lot, to meditate for many years. What is your view on this? Yes. Um... David, uh, it, it actually requires no effort at all. It's the way thought works that blinds us to it. So we turn it into a long and difficult journey. I understand uh, your own teacher was a man named Terence Gray, uh, who wrote many well-received spiritual books on the nature of awakening to our true nature and non-volitional living under the pen name Wei Wu Wei. What did you learn from him? Almost everything. He was a pioneer in bringing non-volitional living to the West. I've simply shared in my own words and in my own way uh, what, what he showed me and, and trying to make it as clear and simple as I can. Can you tell me a little more about the nature of your relationship with Wei Wu Wei? I understand you were pen pals. Yes, through letters in the 1970s, he answered my questions and uh, verified my under understanding over a period of years. Terence lived in Monaco, so it took our letters quite a while to get back and forth. So uh, I had a long time to uh, ponder things between letters. And, uh, but he, he uh, wrote me back uh, very promptly. It just uh, drug it out a long time to use the old snail mail system that nobody uses anymore for letters. If we may, let's go more deeply into your book. I'd like to know what inspired you to write this book, who is your target audience, and what you hope readers will gain from reading it. Of course, uh, there, there was the challenge of getting these things down on paper as clearly and simply as possible, and using the experience I had working with groups and the techniques I developed then I was able to share it with others who were interested in higher living, and that's my target audience. I'm very keen to learn more about the 11 reality meditations contained in your book. 
Can you explain for us the concept of a reality meditation? They were developed while working with groups to enable them to intuitively see upstream of words and concept to the ground of their being. This is intuitive research. You must go beyond the concepts and preconceived notions to a higher dimension where the mind works in a different way, whole, unconditioned, and spontaneous. Apart from the reality meditations themselves, what else would you possibly advise to a sincere person desiring to gain a deeper understanding of themselves and the nature of this human life? Uh, first of all, question your present world model. Look for a self other than thoughts or concepts. What you are is not found in ethereal concepts and philosophy. The book is a big help, though, in, in guiding your questions. However, you must make your own discoveries and make up your own mind about what you find. I'd like to hear more about your own spiritual path. Can you tell me about your own journey a little? I think it's relevant as people want to know what has prompted you to share this message and teaching uh, about non-volitional living. Now, that's a long story, David, but uh, it wasn't until I started to ask the question, what am I, that I began to make progress. I wrote a book about those discoveries, and then I found Terence Gray's books, and then began to correspond with them. With his patient guidance, my intuitive research progressed much better. And uh, now I want to share this with others. Were there some specific breakthrough moments for you? Or was it more a matter of a gradual deepening of insight and understanding? It was both. Uh, first came an intuitive insight, a flash of understanding. And then I dwelt upon it, trying to see it better. Sometimes uh, I, it didn't seem to be making much progress. and. Then one day I would just realize that I saw it clearly. Some of the things Terence Gray told me are still opening up. You draw on the new physics a lot in your book. How do you come to relate science to spiritual understanding and how can that understanding of science be helpful for the sincere person desiring more peace and spiritual insight in their lives? People have long thought uh, science and religion were at odds with each other, and they are in many ways. However, the new science of particle physics actually proves many of the non-dual discoveries you'll make about the higher reality, the higher dimension you will recognize in your study of non-volitional living. If you could sum up the core message of your book as succinctly as possible for people, what would you say? Well, I really can't communicate this discovery in, in words, uh, especially in just a few. It's, it's beyond thought. Uh, but it's a, a little bit like climbing out of a dark and dangerous valley full of fears and insubstantial forms and confusion and ascending to a mountaintop where you can see for miles and miles and everything is clear and everything is bright, solid and safe and full of joy and new possibilities where you can relax and just be. Using the reality meditations, uh, the reality meditations and guidance for your own discovery you can move up to this higher dimension. Okay, so that was our brief uh, conversation with Galen Sharp. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you would like to learn more about um, the insights that Galen presents in his book, uh, you can have a look at uh, the new website www.nonvolitionalliving.com and um, we hope that you uh, check out the book uh, on Amazon 
Uh, it's a Kindle ebook and also available uh, as a paperback. So thank you very much for watching. God bless.